trial run here. Try to teach something. Okay. What am I going to teach? I want to teach something about Ashlev Hasidus, the uh, Jewish tradition, uh, mystical stuff, and show how, amazingly enough, it's very close to what people are doing in the avant-garde theater these days. Some other time I'll get to the Gestalt therapy, but right now just take the avant-garde theater, especially the work, a few exercises I learned from Abu Mines company. They're still in business, I think, in New York, and uh, I studied a little bit with them over in 1976, 7, I don't know, around that time. And then I learned a few exercises. I, <laughs> I made a million notes and the notes all disappeared. The house burned down, so that's the end of my notes. But this is some of what I remember. Some of the most important stuff, I guess. Um, how do I get into this? Well, let's see. Uh, Rab Rabbi Yehuda Ashlag, who was a very devout Hasidic uh, family, came from a very devout, devout Hasidic family and uh, of scholars and very religious people. But he also had an interest in uh, philosophy. So according to what I read uh, in his biography, um, he studied Hegel and Schopenhauer and Nietzsche, who uh, were people that uh, he also was interested in communism for a while, although he didn't like Stalin's version of it, from what I've read. So he came up with his own version of a kind of a community-oriented uh, Hasidic uh, point of view. But anyway, one of the main points that he, 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 one of the central ideas of his philosophy is the idea that um, creation, and the relationship between the creator and the creation and um, that somehow these two elements, the creator and the creation, uh, emanate forth together. Uh, God, uh, should I say use God or Hashem? Well, let's see, what does he use? He talks about the Hmm, forgot. Got to check that out. But anyway, the the God when he talks about it is the um, the source. And the moment creation happens, there is created a an otherness of what he calls a will to receive, a real will to receive. In other words, some kind of an I want. I want something. Now, depending on how this I want uh, is expressed, we get either a religious uh, person that he would condone, or we get some kind of an evil person. If the, want, if the I want is just I want something for me alone, then it would constitute something that would be not uh, quite kosher, according to his opinion. So, um, what does it have to do with Nebelmeyer's theater? I want to stay, so I keep going back and forth to make clear that I am not just uh, pretending to be a Hasidic rabbi here. I'm not a Hasidic rabbi. I'm a person who finds a lot of value in this way of thinking, and I especially enjoy making parallels between systems and using them in my own work to give a, a kind of a Jewish dimension to the theater work I do and a, a theatrical, uh, artistic, creative dimension to the uh, religion I like to study. And also it ties in with the Gestalt therapy, the same thing. I tie the therapy to the religion and then the religion to the therapy. That's my special contribution. And that's what makes me unique. So I'm not trying to put out, out Hasid, the Hasidim, and I'm not trying to be a better director than Lee Brewer of Mabu Minds. I'm trying to find parallels, and that for me has been the most uh, center of my creative work over the years in my life, too. Finding, integrating these different aspects of reality 
living it and expressing it in uh, various ways. Okay, so anyway, so this will to receive, what is it? Um, well, you can get involved in all kinds of Kabbalistic mumbo-jumbo about what it is, but uh, a nice way to look at it is um, the, uh, the things that we want in our everyday life, uh, and then when, it, when we uh, cross over we want too much, then it becomes a caricature of ourselves. And that ties in with the theater work, because in theater work we are looking for forms, we, we uh, find, a person finds a form, that somehow is from, it comes from one, one of his side of his personality, and then to make theater out of it, it's fun to exaggerate it. So let's see if I think of something now. Um, I want to do this on my feet too. So I'll stand up, go back to my studio over here. Welcome, well, welcome to my studio, mini studio. You know, this whole thing's happening in my little room in my, my apartment here. I'm not going to pretend I have a lot of money for a studio. But I do have good, good video equipment. I have a nice camera. So you can see the results of that. Anyway, so um, let's say, for example, I, uh, in my life, I like to make money. So I'm going to, oh boy, give me this money, give me, give me that, give me, the, I'll take that money, that money. And then when I see myself doing that, if I'm a, a performer, I say, hey, that's usable material. So, ah, 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 and it becomes caricature becomes a form I can use. All right? So that's an example of a form. A form that I can use. <coughs> grabbing, grabbing. I'm a grabber. I'm a grabber. All right? Now, if I want to connect this to, to the religion, what I want to do is to get in touch with some inner source, which is a here and now, you might say messianic now type material thing that's happening, and illuminate that what we call dead form that now has become a caricature. So one way to do it is a, is a, they call a mocking your forms exercise. I watch myself doing that, and I stand back here and watch myself. Franklin, I see you. I see. Uh, first, I do it. As I do it, I'm studying how I do it. Let's see, this hand moves this way. This one moves that way. My face scrunches up. Stomach's tense, <laughs> buttocks are tense. <laughs> That's why I want, I want money. Give me money, money, money. All right, my <laughs> voice too. Money, money. Right. I can now, now that I did it, I can watch myself doing it, and I can mock it, mock the form. And as I mock it, watch how I distort it. Okay, Franklin, I see you over there, you greedy, greedy bourgeois type. You. You're not satisfied just with uh, meditating on a mountaintop somewhere. You gotta grab. You grab and you grab and you grab. You want this and you want that. Ah. Okay, so now I distorted that form and made it into expanded. It, right? Okay, so the form is now more flexible. When I stood back here and um, distorted that form, I was looking at it from a a kind of a pure here and now truth-seeking point of view. So what I did was I illuminated that dead form, that shell of a form, with here and now ideas, with here and now creative action. Okay? So there we have the two sides. There we have the performer on top of his material. I'm not stuck in it, I'm outside of it, on top of it. And I am illuminating it with my here and now input. So we have the two sides of uh, Rabbi Ashlag's system. We have the, the creator, God, me God of my little world here, and the creation. And I am taking it from being just uh, one I receive for myself to being I'm bringing it back towards, towards uh, reintegrating it with the source. So it becomes, becomes more alive, live form. So it was, it was dead form. I want the money, give me the money. And now it becomes live form. And if I put it to music, for example, let's say I want to do 
Do do do do do do do do do do put that tune to it, then I go but it's what it is, it's still the same grabbing form. But it's illuminated now with that music from the uh, what's it called? Now talk dark town strutters ball. Okay, so that's dark town strutters ball illuminating in the here and now. The dead form. So we have the creator, me, on top of the material, illuminating it. Okay, so now you could read uh, Yehuda Ashlag's Kabbalah until you're blue in the face. You know, and I, I've been doing that, reading, getting blue in the face, reading it. And, you know, you could read, especially read it in Hebrew, it becomes, you get even bluer. But if you just relate it to some simple theater exercise game here, you know. Like even children, could, you could teach a 10-year-old this game, then that child has just learned Ashla Kabbalah. Poof! <laughs> okay, now of course, the Rebbies aren't going to like what I'm telling you now. That it's that simple. But it is that simple. If it wasn't that simple, it wouldn't be passed down for thousands of years in all kinds of traditions. You know, you can get the same stuff out of, you know, Buddhism. You can get it. Go to the Naropa Institute, learn the same stuff. That's probably where Mabel Mines learned it, or uh, you know, learn it from uh, Brecht. Learn it from all kinds of places. All right. So I just taught a little bit. That was a little module. All right. Now I'm going to see how that came out on the video. Then I'll decide whether I want to put it on the net or not. Okay, this was an experiment, my first experiment trying this process. So maybe it didn't work so well. Well, let's check it out. Okay.